From Nairobi, Kenya, you're listening to the Koza Podcast, brought to you by Koza.com. Welcome to the podcast, Killer Mutu. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mavo, and we are excited to continue to host you guys and to have conversations on matters, Jesus, and life. And today, one of the things that we want to talk about is matters, Jesus, and marriage, and life. So, conversation topic, we are looking at why Christian marriage. And I'm pretty sure already you're wondering, what do you mean Christian marriage? You know, in Kenya, there are many, many, many ways that a marriage, a marriage is a union between a man and a woman. We need to be very clear on that. Biblically speaking, marriage is union between a man and a woman. Now in Kenya, they recognize what we call customary marriage. Uh, they probably go and just do a, a, a marriage ceremony at the ages uh, place. And there are guys who just, you know, um, you know, those are recognized in church. And then there's such as a coma fair fair, a kuvuka fence, what will come we stay, come we chill, come we just do life. And there are interesting ways that well concluded what marriage is. But we need today to give it a context. What does the Bible say? We exist as Kuzi Podcast to give biblical views to the matters and the issues that we're going through. And so we want to look at it. What does the Bible really say about this whole thing called marriage? And to walk us through this conversation, we have um, a married and some two single guys here. Uh, the married person, one and only truly yours, mm. just as uh, Bwana Kingori, Baba Matt, Kabisa. Baba One. It's nice to, to see you. And then to Baba Zero Awili. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, by the way, you guys, did you guys watch that? Pro? There was a guy yeah, called Baba, Baba Zero. Baba Zero. All right, yeah. Baba Zero. All right, now. Yeah, Gen Z. Yeah, Gen Z. Uh, All right, so. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, this is Edgar, and then there's Saddam as well. Um, you know, single and, uh, you know, uh, able to understand some of these things. Now, let's first of all probably just put some definitions on the ground. Is there anything as Christian marriage, are we over emphasizing things here? Yeah. What do you mean Christian marriage? So is there anything like Christian marriage before we even go into other things? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Christian marriage exists personally. The fact that marriage is instituted by God should mean all marriage should be, in a sense, Christian or Christ-exalting. But we sadly live in a day and age where they are, the church has been maligned once, in one sense or another. And as you say, there are many forms of marriages. But so, yes, there is a form called Christian marriage, which essentially means mm -hmm. the joining of a man and a woman in a church with the view of companionship to the glory of God. Okay, that's what is there. So they, you're basically saying there's something like Christian marriage. Mm. So just so, if there's Christian marriage, so I mean, who 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 is uh, embodied in this kind of, we are calling Christian marriage? Or is it just one of those things that, again, to make us accused as Christians, just push everything, everything to for, for us. Yeah, we must find ourselves there. So is it, is, is this something that is, is there a sense in what you're saying, Christian marriage? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, one, when you're talking about Christian, you're not only just talking about, yeah. um, uh, we, we, are, we are talking actually about, you know, doing marriage the biblical way. Because uh, the moment we are born again, mm -hmm. we, we adjust to the biblical worldview. Okay. So that the way we live our lives, think of other worldviews, mm -hmm. even our Africa traditional, they have their own worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, what they think about life, All right. uh, that worldview informs their values. Mm -hmm. Uh, it informs, uh, of course, uh, their belief system mm -hmm. uh, so that when, when you're talking about belief about marriage, belief informing values, values informing our character, how we relate, how we walk with each other. Right. And therefore, when you're talking about Christian marriage, we are talking about doing, uh, of course, marriage from that worldview of the Bible. Uh, and that will inform, again, our belief so that if the Bible does not subscribe, for example, to adultery or to having even many wives or or such. I think uh, that is the kind of worldview that you are talking about. Then, uh, then again, even the values. How do we get to treat each other? How do we get to uh, to treat our wives? You know, our husbands uh, and all that. Again, it is informed by that uh, biblical worldview, uh, and and so that when you see how we relate with each other. That is now transform looking uh, on the outward, um, how we walk, how we do our things again, all informed by the Bible. So 
So that I'm looking at it from that angle that not everybody has subscribed to a biblical worldview. And so that informs also the way they do marriage, uh, the way they raise children and all that. So you're saying this Christian marriage simply because of the Bible and all those things? Um, that's what I'm saying oh, about okay. Saddam. Uh, yes. Mm. Christian marriage. Is, 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 that, is that a valid sentence? Is that a valid statement? Mm. Or yeah. are we becoming too... Uh, too it, is, it is a valid. I just want to separate it from what the Marriage Act Mm -hmm. uh, describe as Christian marriage. Whatever the yes. marriage act describe as Christian marriage is not Christian kind of marriage. Kind educators, but not kids. Because, but when you are kids, I mean, you, <laughs> that, <laughs> brother, you cannot. I mean, we, 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 we cannot forget. We cannot forget Marvin. that you're a learned friend. From mm. your, mm. from mm. your, mm. from your, okay, see, Mister Yomera, you. <laughs> How did they train you in school? <laughs> they <had to> help <laughs> us. <laughs> marriage Act 2014, I say my Christian marriage is the one that is conducted in church. Mm -hmm. And then and then it kind of described that ceremony. Conducted had, in church? Uh, l l Particularly? Uh, uh, your yes, con are, okay. conduct, conducted in, not in, in church or right. okay. uh, even other places, but mainly in church, right. uh, but as a pastor, mm. you know. Okay. And then... Um, basically in the christian way that is not a christian marriage because mm. the ceremony itself mm. is christian okay but not entirely so because your last move is suti right now gown your white okay okay <laughs> um mm -hmm. some of those things are very european right uh, but the christian marriage as my brothers are saying here yes. is one that involved an adult male Christian man who believes in Jesus as the only savior of his soul and he's trying to live by the Holy Spirit right. and producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, mm. marrying an adult female. Make it to women, biological female. An adult biological, biological female. Female. Yeah. Yes. Uh, who believes in the same God, okay. Jesus, right. and is going to heaven. Okay. And though they may fall, they mm -hmm. stand, they repent, they walk. Right. Their value system is the Bible. They look up to Jesus mm -hmm. for their strength to right. live and provision. Mm. So that is now a Christian marriage. Two Christian people. Getting married getting together. Married. Okay. Uh, the other one, the other people who are not Christian can come and perform the Christian ceremonial ceremony for marriage. Right. But theirs is not a Christian marriage. So what makes it Christian is not the church or the venue mm -mm. or the person that has um, done the 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 wedding ceremony. Mm. What makes it Christian is that they both they both believe have a functional relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is to it and in anyway, that is probably something that you they are non Christian. They are non Christian. Yeah. So you they are non Christian. Christian. We are not saying they are bad. It's a church ceremony. We are not saying they are bad because bad. Right. Christians can not yeah. all of them. Mm -hmm. I, I can say Christians can perform what you have described yes. a civil marriage at okay. the ages of his or right. an advocate or a magistrate can do that. And it still that. remains to be a Christian marriage. Yes. Because it's not it's not, it's not the, the two you, people believe in Jesus. It's not the officiator right. even. Okay. The people two people believe in Jesus. Are we are we are we are we, are we then right then to say on the from the onset here and the guys who are tuning in then that if that is the truth if that is what the basic definition of a Christian marriage is two people who are a born again, a man, a biological man who is born again and has a relationship with Jesus Christ meets a biological woman uh, who has a, a relationship with Jesus Christ and they marry. That one is biblically a Christian marriage, regardless yeah. uh, of yes, where it is. Yes, I will also performed. insist, uh -huh. even to they can perform a traditional marriage uh -huh. with the Christian minds. Right. They can be Hindus and perform a Hindu marriage uh -huh. and believe in Jesus. Uh -huh. And when they believe in Jesus, they don't have to perform another marriage. Another one, because? Yes. Because why? Because they have already believed in Jesus. They the point is, they, they both they of them believe in, in they are believers. So, so I, now I, they are yeah. Christians. So I am seeing so that um, I'm not born marriage. again. I get I get a nice pretty lady. We want to get married. We get married. We all not born again. Then I, we get born again. Then we don't need to do another wedding. No, because now we are already. So it's not. So it's not. It's not. It's not the ceremony that that validates and qualifies the the thing that we call marriage. That's exactly Because Lazima took a very clear yes. on this thing as we help many young people. Yeah. Who, the thing yes. that we call Christian the marriage. The thing that we call Christian marriage. Yeah. Okay. Because according to the government, yes. the ceremony must be 
the ceremony for it to be called a christian or, or the ceremony must be for it to be to be a marriage mm, interesting interesting for all the single people who are around there you know the ceremony must be kama ni kwa serikali tafadhali make sure that ceremony ifanyika hivyo ndipo atasema ni ndoa ya ukristo yani these things are getting hot fire here now One of the things that then I, I needed to build up pole pole then is let's respond to this question. Um Edgar, we know why was marriage instituted because uh, we are living in a time where young people are full of uh, fear. People are not getting married. Dudes and dudettes are hitting some ages over there and uh, you in fact if you raise this story of marriage you actually becoming insensitive. It's like thinking yeah. like what's your problem, you know? Yeah. Nana mikwambia lazima mimi natakolewa, mimi sikolewa is like in a just asked, you know, it's like you know so Why was marriage instituted so that we are able to get some perspective? Yeah, uh, um first it was instituted by God. Um and there are five main reasons why marriage was instituted. Okay. Uh the or rather five blanket reasons because there may be more than five but okay. there are five right. like mm-hmm. br- blanket reasons right. why marriage was instituted and first it mm-hmm. was for companionship. Okay. We see in Genesis 2 Mhm. Uh, that man has been created man has been given the mandate to name all the animals mm-hmm. but then he is seen to be lonely okay and then god says man is it's not good for man to be alone and right. so from the rib of adam comes out eve um and as genesis 2 concludes he says bone of my bone flesh of my flesh and now when two are joined they shall become one that's where the idea of marriage uh mm-hmm. came from so first it was for companionship, companionship secondly right. it was for sexual intimacy um the g- sex is essentially a gift granted to married people this is something even i believe songs of solomon speaks to that it was a gift given to married people and that's why even in the mm. when israel was a theocracy mm. we see how anyone who co- did sexual acts mm. outside of marriage mm. was considered worthy of punishment by death. Mm. That's how seri- grave sexual scene was in when Israel was right, a right. bureaucracy. Well, and nowadays young people are just mocking with this thing like nothing else. I mean yeah. what 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 do you what do you say about that then? Um that saying it's a gift for the married but hey we know that is that is not necessarily what's happening. Yeah that yeah. is true mm-hmm. and uh, it's a wrong mindset especially the idea that men can just hook up with women and go on with their lives as okay. if nothing uh, has happened but we see even Paul speak to this there is sort of a, a binding there is a, when you come together there is a uh there is usually a binding uh, that happens okay. when you join mm. and that's why the gift was given to married people because it ensures that it brings out their oneness this okay. gift of sex all right and so it's why even paul speaks to it as an issue of um of church discipline that when you commit sexual immorality he speaks to it in first corinthians 5 that you should not consider one and brother who is engaged in sexual immorality mm. and that's because it was confined to the institution okay. of marriage all right then mm-hmm. thirdly mm-hmm. Uh, marriage was for procreation that genesis 1 speaks to this that men and women were mandated to procreate and fill the earth and subdue it mm-hmm. and so marriage in a sense is meant to bring out the blessing of children okay. uh, as we see in psalm 127 that right. children are a mm-hmm. blessing and a blessing to those who are married right. and that's right. why mm-hmm. and then uh that's why god ordains parenting and even gives instructions for it secondly okay. mm. uh, fourthly rather it was meant as a means to refine one's christ likeness marriage is a very sanctifying mm. um uh institution i'm right. sure the two married men here can speak to that how sanctifying it is of an institution because you get to live with someone who does not think like you okay. and grow together with them so that's another reason right. that the lord instituted mm, okay. uh, marriage and All then right. finally uh-huh. uh, a picture of christ and the church that husbands are to give themselves up for their wives um and to care for them the same way christ did for the church as well that mm-hmm. he gave himself up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the church to right. the glory of his father interesting um, just as what what, what What are some of the things that then hold marriage this this kind of marriage together because you're saying 
it's the the biblicality or the biblicity of it is found in the relationship all right and there's some some some, some things that have been highlighted there by Edgar so what are some values that, of biblical uh, marriage that that we need to look at and say okay then then now that makes sense um of course it's good to mention that god did not uh, in um institute marriage and then leave it to run uh, independently okay uh, so that he is still involved in our day to day in terms of the way we interact All right. uh, through of course the scriptures he mm. guides us on matters of marriage mm -hmm. and uh, one he has guided the man and the woman on how to live with each other right so that if it is the whole aspect of submission in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 all the way to 33 a uh, man and woman has been called both to submit one to another and then uh, again we still move further the bible talking about women to submit to to their husbands as unto the lord then the husbands again to love their wives as christ loves the church mm. and then he moves on again further uh, to guide even spouses in matters of parenting so that it does not stop at that point ephesians chapter 6 again uh, speaks to that uh, mm. that mm. of course the way the parents they are to relate with their children and even children how to relate with their parents in obedience uh, so that again it does not end even at that uh, so that he sets the kind of a parenting that he desires mm -hmm. uh, in Malachi chapter 2 verse 15 to 26 right. to 16 mm. talking about that uh, he desires you know these couples to bring up a godly offspring Mm -hmm. um, again, it still does not end at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, marriage, you know, there is no way out. You've gotten in, uh, the way out again is not divorce. Uh, that uh, he speaks to it, that, um, you know, that it is only death that should separate nothing. What should put asunder whatever God has joined together? You know that's a very that's a very con, 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 contentious issue uh, right now, and probably we will need to just explore that conversation differently. Uh, but even as you say, as you talk about, you know, um, the couples that are supposed to be together as long as they are alive. But you know, just to mention yeah, that, you yeah, know, yeah, that yeah, already know. you you will have a, a many questions coming through. I know there are, there is uh, conversations that follow through in terms of abuse. I have an abusive partner and all that. Right. But there is, of course, that mm -hmm. room. You know, if the ideal, if the ideal living space. With the person who okay. is abusive and such, mm. you know, somebody has just decided to leave you. You know, the Bible also has the room like for living in that separation. Right. Uh, or, or of course, having a room mm. for reconciliation because mm. anything can happen right. uh, later. Then there is again the Bible mm. uh, guiding even the elderly, yes. you know, yes. on how even to live an inheritance to their children. Mm. Uh, and so we are able to see God guiding, you know, right. the whole conversation of marriage from its inception all the way right. even to old age mm, okay. uh, and so and so god is quite involved in right. every step uh mm. of marriage all right yeah interesting i don't know what you're picking up at this point in time but hey we are making clear a few things one it is a christian marriage not so much because it was done in church but because the people getting married have a functional relationship with jesus christ that is critical all right there's some values that we need to um to adhere to we need to know them from scripture but also there are some reasons that God gave us this thing called marriage. Now, if you want to get a lot more information about Jesus and just conversations that will probably bless your soul, you want to visit us www.kuzab.com. www.kuzab.com. Visit us there. Utapata mambo mengi ambayo utakusidia roho kukua katika buwana. There's also a um, whole interesting video that you've not interacted with. Probably you need to interact with top right corner, receive Christ button. There's a video there that will share the gospel with you. There's an app on your mobile phone that you need to download. If you've not yet downloaded, where are you at? You know, when you're a stranger in Jerusalem, download the app and just get to learn and grow even in your quiet times. Let's go just to build this issue because there's a lot more that can be said. And I just want us to continue to bring in some, some nuggets here and there. So we are setting, we are basically setting precedence. We are saying, this is what this thing is all about. This is what God has said it to be. There are some values that we need to adhere to as as uh, as we think about uh, biblical Christ or, or Christian marriage, what we call it. Uh, Saddam, what if there are values, uh, if people need to stick to some values, then those people need to know that they actually even themselves have a value. Mm. So how 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 does God bring this to men and women? You know, and because now we're talking about this context of marriage. Mm. Yes. Without without um, without Christianity, we value ourselves very differently. Some okay. society will value men more than women, mm -hmm. and others will value women more than men. All right. Others will value women by 
cows others will value men by how much they can hunt right and how much they can steal cows from mm-hmm. other communities right. so those those are non christian way of valuing men but when you come to other god of the bible the god of the bible has valued both man and woman equally mm-hmm. genesis 1:27 right. tells us so mm-hmm. in the image of god he created them mm-hmm. male and female yeah so we, we when you look at a woman she is the an image bearer of god right as much as she is you know uh, and this is not just for only believers mm. i mean everyone created bears the image of god in them right um men and women alike and so god has attached value to women in fact christianity is known revolutionarily to attach a lot of value to the woman mm. than any other than any other on earth really okay all right because mm-hmm. the value that, that is, is factual that, that is, is really true. factual because mm-hmm. uh the christian men protect their women they provide for their women they care for their women they love one woman <laughs> they do not <laughs> okay we are saying the christian men, like the real deal real deal christian, deal christian men, right? men yeah. Okay, yeah i'm not but talking are... about those who just say they are do you christians know they are, do you know how many people have been broken in jesus name i i know i know yeah, okay so i know yeah, yeah. and and yeah. There, there are those ones who will yeah. who will mess up uh, for the name of the lord mm. uh, they will deal with god mm. but i'm talking about those ones who are faithful to god and yes. obedient, obedient to his word okay because there are a lot of uh scriptures uh bible verses that encourages mm. uh, respect to women honor mm. to women love mm. to women right at the same time uh, christian women have been very very honoring to their husbands and they are, are giving them honor due to them because they do they don't do that mm. and and i think this is something that i want to say yeah. ephesians 5 it doesn't in anywhere in any place say women love your wives because Christ ha- because she is worthy of your of your love no it says because Christ loved the church you're doing that because of what Christ has done uh, uh, now whether uh, that uh, woman uh, is lovable or not you, you meant men love your wives you know you said women love your wives i'm thinking oh. we are, we, 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 yeah yeah so i, mean, I retract you, yes <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I repent. Yes, yes. Men, love men love your, your wives, wife. husband. Okay. So yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. I think it's Thank important. You, yes. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hey, to see Aribu Maneno. Men love your wives mm-hmm. as Christ loved the church. Yeah. It doesn't say if that woman is lovable. He doesn't say if that woman is submissive. It's a, it's a, it's a command that regardless of how that woman is because mm-hmm. the command is from God so you do right. the loving because God has told you to love. Mm-hmm. It says women submit to your husband not because the man is love not because the man is uh, good to mm-hmm. you. Those are regardless. Things, Those are things you submit yeah. because God is the one who has said you submit. Right. In uh in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 it says actually do not if, even if you're married to someone who is an unbeliever do not divorce her. Back up. Do not divorce him. Mm. Back up mm. until they themselves want to leave you. Right. Then you can't uh, hold them back. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but the mm-hmm. but do not divorce them because it's now nah, I'm a Christian I can't you know. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. Be a good wife as unto the Lord, right. be a good husband. As, that is the value, the value to which God Christians says. have right. uh to both uh sexes. Interesting. All right. I mean let's let, 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 let me just continue to uh, accelerate the conversation a bit because I need us to mention a few more things before our time just shows that, it, that it's back. And now I'm um, the the fact that the bible gives value to people is very important then for us as we consider um you know matters marriage and you know the two of you that you know hopefully one of these days you're going to come for your weddings uh because then if you have value where it matters most then it means that other things can actually flow regardless of the turbulent moments because they're going to come we are human i think we've written and we've done a, a, a podcast here but the best of men are men at best you know we will eventually just do something that is unbecoming how does the church come in then um to help this institution that god has put how does what role does the church play 
Uh, and and we are living in a time where the church has really lost a lot of credibility, especially among the young people. So how, and honestly, to some extent, rightfully so, how does the church bring accountability? Uh, just so in a, in, a, in, a, in a very brief way, if you can just, yeah. just, just yeah. Um, one will say that the church has set up, of course, the accountability and the support system yes. uh, for couples. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of course, we talk about counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, from the time that you you start courting or you you are now preparing for your wedding, there is the premarital counseling. Okay. And then there is also even during your marriage life, mm. you know, that uh, you will be able to enjoy, you know, some counseling uh, so that during conflict, uh, you don't end your marriage mm. uh, based on whatever differences mm. Uh, that exists between you. Right. And I have seen like a church where I'm pastoring, we will not charge you, mm -mm. you know, that you just come and you are able to walk with you. Uh, number two, we are talking about encouragement again, even by fellow Christians. Mm -hmm. Today, one of those things that are really trending is the marriage support groups. Right. And, and so even where we are fellowshipping, by the way, we are still also working towards having a similar thing, mm -hmm. uh, so that dividing, of course, people in different ages of marriage. Mm -hmm. If you are married for five years, this forms a group, and this ensures, you know, that uh, we continue sharing uh, our journey together on what is happening. Then there is, again, a community around our children. I've been to door to door, mm -hmm. and then somebody tells me, I'm a TV, I'm a radio station. Mm -hmm. And then I look at their children praying outside. I'm like, does your child even understand? what is being preached, right. you know, kwa right. radio, kwa TV. Mm. and on that account, then you realize parents are losing their children, mm. even if you have been hurt by the church, you know, it's good to, to differentiate between a human being and even Christ himself, it's not Christ who have hurt you, mm. and so there are people who have ended up destroying their own family and children's lives, mm. uh, just because they were hurt by certain individuals, right. and so, so the church gives your children, mm. you know, a community whereby they are able to grow uh, with other children and influence each other go in a godly manner. Mm. Then there is again still spiritual foundation training, right. you know, right. that as you are continuing, there mm. is more training mm. on matters of Christian values right. uh, that again will uphold your marriage. And finally, mm -hmm. we talk about even other seminars. Um, right. I know many churches have not done so well in some of these areas, mm. uh, but still uh, regardless, I think the church offers you a big uh, accountability and a support system uh, that will ensure your marriage stands even in times of trial. Mm. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Now, I I, I think I, I need us to wrap up the conversation. So let me just do a recap of what we are saying. So we are establishing what Christian marriage is, and we are saying it's mostly you know it's it's based it's called Christian because the people need to have a functional relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's how it passes, regardless of how church fires we have been and how much involvement we have had with a certain denomination. Mm. That is not what makes it Christian marriage. Biblical marriage is because it's based off biblical principles mm. that gives us values, uh, that gives us an appreciation of who we are and how we are valued by this God who has brought this thing called marriage. And we are reminded that it's actually all from God who uh, brought it for mm. the purposes of, uh, you know, companionship and procreation and, uh, you know, God exalting sexual intimacy and 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 all these things are there. And that's why. And that is what Christian marriage is. Now, I want us to, 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 to wrap it up because I can see time is really not so much on our side. So what would be, all of you, just tell me very briefly, one thing that would, you know, you would tell young people who have gotten so discouraged about the whole thing called church and stuff, and especially with all the craze of expenditure that comes with the weddings that now lead to these marriages and all this mess. What is something, on account of just what we discussed today, because mm -hmm. there's a lot more for us to say, but on account of what you've said, one thing that you just charge or urge or exhort the young person that is tuning in, uh, or even the one that is married that is tuning in, you know, um, on matters of Christian marriage. For me, is pray. Mm. Uh, pray for your future spouse if you're not married. Right. Pray for your spouse if you're married. Mm -hmm. Pray for yourself to be a good husband, a good wife, future, or as you continue being one. Right. Pray. Okay. Thank All right. You. Regardless of how you have been hurt, embracing yes. the biblical worldview is still the way to go. Mm. It has stood the test of time mm. from Moses to date. Mm. Uh, regardless of what churches have done against yes. your life, but the Bible has stood the test of time. Mm. That is the way to go. That's the way to go. All right. 
and look to the hope that is eternal um that this is that even when you pray for your husband pray mm. for your future spouse that right. you still have a view that Christ is coming mm. that these are uh, that your work here is not in vain it's right. not pointless mm-hmm. it's pointing to a greater hope mm. and so even in your marriage or your non marriage regard everything as loss for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus regard everything as loss for the surpassing again of knowing Christ Jesus as lord christian marriage there's a lot more you can say about that well if you're born again and you're single that is also a gift from god and you need to continue looking at it in that way that god has a reason that why you are there like that but if you're looking forward to this thing called marriage you want to think twice about especially for the, for you who is a member of the fellowship or in a church or you consider yourself christian uh, whatever that means for you what does the bible say about it and how can you start preparing for this thing thank you so much gentlemen we can say lots 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 about this thing but we got to get it out uh, you know, and just let people know what we need to know, and then a lot more confusion will come your way. Download the Kuza app, visit us, www.kuzaapp.com Komambo mingi ambayo tajenga roho yako. Mungu kubariki sana until later. The Lord be with you. Thank you for listening to the Kuza podcast. Brought to you by kuzaapp.com An online ministry with blogs, videos, podcasts, and a mobile app. Make sure to make, make, make sure to subscribe to get more content to help you grow spiritually.